Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I will discuss important obstetric ultrasound signs. So let's start. Intradecidual sac sign. Intradecidual sac sign is the earliest sign of intrauterine pregnancy. It is seen at the time of implantation when the early embryo burrows itself into decidualized endometrium. It is seen as a spherical, cystic structure eccentric to the central echo of the uterine cavity. Intradecidual sac sign representing the early gestational sac. It is visible by 4 to 4.5 weeks of gestation on transvaginal ultrasound. As you can see on this transvaginal image, the yellow arrow pointing to the intradecidual sac sign, which is seen eccentric to the central echo. Intradecidual sac sign progresses quickly to a double decidual sac sign if the pregnancy is normal. Double decidual sac sign. It was first described in the 1980. Double decidual sac sign is the expanding gestational sac. It is defined as two concentric echogenic rings of tissue surrounding an intraendometrial fluid collection in an early intrauterine pregnancy. The outer ring is the decidualized endometrium, while the inner ring is the chorionic sac. It is seen at five weeks of gestation by transvaginal ultrasound. Conversely, in ectopic pregnancy, the decidual reaction presence as only a single echogenic ring around the endometrial fluid collection. Empty amnion sign is a specific indicator of anembryonic pregnancy. In normal pregnancy, embryo is first seen as focal thickening on yolk sac. Then amnion becomes visible, enlarging rapidly to envelop the embryo. If the amnion is visible without embryo, this is called empty amnion sign. It is an indicator of pregnancy failure regardless of the mean sac diameter, and is considered to have a high positive predictive value. Expanded amnion sign is defined as an amnion visible surrounding the embryo, but no cardiac activity. Normally, any visible embryo that is surrounded by an amnion should also have a heartbeat, regardless of crown rump length. An absent heartbeat in this context is suspicious for early pregnancy loss. The expanded amnion sign has been described as a poor prognostic sign in early pregnancy, suspicious but not diagnostic of failed early pregnancy. Diamond ring sign. This is the earliest sign of embryonic development. It is seen at five to six weeks of gestational age by transvaginal ultrasound. The embryo is depicted as a focal thickening at the periphery of the yolk sac. This appearance is referred to as diamond ring sign. The yolk sac represents the ring and the embryo represents the diamond. Double bleb sign. It is a sonographic feature where there is visualization of a gestational sac containing a yolk sac and amniotic sac, giving an appearance of two small bubbles called double bleb sign. The embryonic disc is located between the two bubbles. The embryo is within the amniotic sac. Both embryo and yolk sac are inside the gestational sac. It is an important feature of an intrauterine pregnancy, and thus differentiating pregnancy from a pseudogestational sac. Yolk stalk sign. Normally, the yolk stalk is a narrow connection of the yolk sac to the midgut of the embryo. It is best seen when the embryo and yolk sac become separated, 
and this separation does not occur until the crown rump length is greater than 5 mm. Early on pregnancy, the embryo normally wears yolk sac like small backpack. At this point, any separation of the embryo from the yolk sac with development of yolk stock is abnormal, as the yolk stock should not be exist. So, a yolk stock sign is abnormal separation of the embryo from the yolk sac in early embryonic development, specifically where crown rump length is 5 mm or less, with no visible heartbeat. Twin peak or lambda sign this sign indicates the presence of dicryonic diamniotic twin pregnancy. It is best seen in the first trimester, between 10 to 14 weeks of gestation. It is a triangular wedge of chorionic tissue, extending into base of intertwin membrane. The base of the echogenic triangle is at the placental surface, and the apex extends into the thick intertwin membrane. T sign. It refers to the lack of chorion, extending between the layers of the intertwin membrane, denoting a monochorionic twin pregnancy. The intertwin membrane approaches the placenta at about 90 degrees angle, in T configuration, with no wedge of chorionic tissue at the base. Pseudogestational sac sign. A pseudogestational sac represents a thick deci-dual reaction surrounding intrauterine fluid, which may be a blood or secretions. 10% of patients with ectopic pregnancy demonstrate a pseudogestational sac. The absence of the double deci-dual sac sign helps distinguish a pseudogestational sac from a true gestational sac. In addition, a pseudogestational sac is located centrally within the endometrial canal, while normal gestational sac is located eccentrically within the canal. Tubal ring sign also referred to as bagel sign or blob sign, one of the ultrasound signs of a tubal ectopic pregnancy. It is the second most common sign of a tubal pregnancy. The tubal ring sign describes a hyperechoic ring surrounding an extrauterine gestational sac. A related finding is the ring of fire sign, which is recognized by peripheral hypervascularity of the hyperechoic ring. This echogenic ring may contain yolk sac or embryo with cardiac activity. Ring of fire sign the term ring of fire was used to describe the high velocity, low impedance flow, surrounding ectopic adnexal pregnancy. Peripheral hypervascularity is a nonspecific finding of the ring of fire sign, and may also be seen surrounding a normal maturing follicle, or a corpus luteal cyst. Determining the location of this type of flow, whether it is within the ovary or outside the ovary, is most important to distinguish between an ectopic pregnancy and a corpus luteum. However, the ring of fire sign is most helpful when no definite ectopic pregnancy is seen on grayscale images. Color Doppler images of the adnexa may demonstrate the ring of fire flow in an otherwise nondescript adnexal lesion, so it may improve confidence in the diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. Sliding sac sign. The sliding sac sign describes the sliding of the gestational sac against the endocervical canal when gentle pressure is applied during transvaginal ultrasound examination. This confirming that gestational sac not adherent to the cervical canal and signifies spontaneous abortion in progress. This sign should be absent in cervical ectopic pregnancy where the gestational sac is adherent to the cervical canal. The interstitial line sign is a useful diagnostic sign of interstitial ectopic pregnancy. 
The interstitial line sign may be seen as an echogenic line between the endometrial cavity and the gestational sac. This echogenic line most likely represents the interstitial portion of the fallopian tube. The interstitial line sign have 80% sensitivity and 98% specificity for the diagnosis of interstitial ectopic pregnancy. However, these criteria are reproducible only in the first trimester and the diagnosis become more difficult and equivocal when the gestation enlarges in the second trimester. Butterfly Sign of Choroid Plexus The butterfly sign refers to the normal appearance and shape of the choroid plexus on axial imaging of the fetal brain in the first trimester. This appearance confirms that there is two cerebral hemispheres. Absence of this sign may suggest holoprosencephaly. Banana sign. In this sign the cerebellum curves around midbrain, giving the appearance of banana shape. This sign is seen on axial images through the posterior fossa of the fetus. This is associated with conditions such as Kiri 2 malformation. The banana sign is also seen in the majority of fetuses with spina bifida. Lemon sign. This sign represents the loss of the normal convex contour of the frontal bones with flattening or inward depression. It is seen on axial fetal ultrasound images obtained at the biparietal diameter level. It has a strong association with spina bifida and is very useful for detecting this condition before 24 weeks of gestation. Lemon sign may disappear as gestational age advances and hence it is less reliable after 24 weeks. The sign is not specific for spina bifida and has also been seen in dandy walker malformation, encephalocele, cystic hygroma, diaphragmatic hernia, corpus callosal agenesis, hydronephrosis, and umbilical vein varix. Spina bifida is commonly associated with ventricular megaly and chiry 2 malformation. A mild lemon sign may be normally seen and needs to be differentiated from a true sign. The lemon sign can also be falsely produced by angling the probe downward and anteriorly to include the orbit. Keyhole sign. This sign represents distended urinary bladder funneling into dilated posterior urethra proximal to the level of the obstruction giving a keyhole appearance. This sonographic sign is seen in boys with posterior urethral valve. Keyhole sign is not a specific ultrasound sign of posterior urethral valve and may also be present in different causes of lower urinary tract obstruction, such as urethral atresia. Daughter cyst sign The daughter cyst sign describes a small rounded, anechoic structure within a primary cyst. It is reported to be pathognomonic for ovarian cysts. The daughter cyst sign, although is not sensitive, but can be considered highly predictive of the ovarian origin of female fetal intra-abdominal cysts. Spalding sign. The spalding sign refers to overlapping fetal cranial bones at the sutures. It was first described by the American obstetrician Alfred Baker Spalding in a case series in 1922, based on the radiographic appearance of these osseous structures. Spalding sign is an indicative of intrauterine fetal demise. The sign develops anywhere from 1 to 21 days following fetal demise, but usually becomes apparent within 10 days. Shrinkage of the underlying brain tissue is supposed to be the underlying mechanism. Overlapping at most of the sutures is visualized in all projections with Spalding sign. 
Thank you very much for your attention.